Hey everybody, this is Dave with OC Astronomy. I just wanted to give an update on the current status of our uh, university's dome. And uh, I have some, some news, or at least the contemplation I'm making. Um, and I'll describe that in just a second. First off, um, we've had some wind troubles and our, uh, our next dome, the, uh, the door has blown off a couple of times. Um, initially we got just the rotator package and uh, it turns out that the, the door by itself doesn't have enough weight really to keep it from blowing off. There's also, if you look up there, there's uh, this white strand, uh, strap is, is what holds the, uh, uh, the second piece of the slot. There's a couple of screws um, on this end and a couple of screws on that end that uh, they're just small little screws with caps on them that hold that white plastic strap on there and uh, That's all that's holding the second one on except for on the outside the wheels are resting on the tracks and it holds it down by the Because the track is underneath the wheels and I found that the wind can sometimes be enough here in Oklahoma to actually blow that second piece uh, free from the wheels it can actually have enough oomph to get it to pop out of one of the wheels and once it gets on on one side of the wheels it's a goner and the wind just rips it right off and it takes the uh the, that white strap with it um then once that's gone it's only a you know it, it immediately blows this other door off and it'll blow this uh uh this plastic piece here uh has broken and it's happened a couple of times this spring and so um we're actually I think the, the best solution is actually going to be to get the, uh, uh, we, we've ordered the shutter kit. The shutter kit has a track on the inside of the dome where the, uh, there's a motor that sits here, uh, kind of heavy with a battery, and then there's a track that goes along the inside of the uh, dome lip. And it's like a garage door, uh, it has a little gear and it works its way up the track. And so I'm hoping that the um, that metal track with the heavy motor that's on there will keep enough weight on the door. And then there's also uh, the guy at Next Dome, uh, Babak or Babak. His name uh, I haven't ever <laughs> I haven't ever heard his name pronounced. I've only seen it in email. B a b a k. Uh, he's a nice guy to work with. But um, he said that the uh, they have some more covers that kind of cover the wheels and the, the, the second piece of the dome to keep it steady in its track and to keep it from, from getting loose and flying off. So with those two things, the combination of the heavy uh, motor and the battery that's with it and the, uh, the, the track that's gonna be on there, I'm hoping we'll solve our Oklahoma high winds and keep, keep us from blowing our doors off. Um, so that's one bit of news and an update. And uh, to go along with that, a second bit of news, um, I've been using this Celestron CGX mount for a while, and it's gotten to a point where it's okay. I've, I've been working with the guys on the Team Celestron website, and credit to them, they've been listening, they've been addressing the problems as I present them uh, with the CPWI software. And my trouble has been uh, just little things that come up, like, it wasn't talking to uh, my control software is Maxim DL, and it wasn't talking between the guider uh, the guider function in Maxim and the uh, ASCOM driver that CPWI has. They weren't talking to each other correctly. Uh, Maxim was sending a long guide command to calibrate the mount, and also when it did a dither, it would send a long guide command of like. 10 seconds or 20 seconds and it would say move the telescope from point A to point B in one big movement and uh, the CPWI ASCOM driver would only take a maximum of 2.5 seconds and so it was sending a long command and Maxim would move its ma uh, ASCOM would move its maximum length and it would stop and so I could never get the calibration to complete under uh, Max MDL um, I could do it using the old handset driver and connecting through the handset. And you can see down here, I've had to uh, get the handset and connect it. Um, and using the handset, I could, I could get it to work with the guider commands. 
or if I had the guider connected to the ST4 cable, I could do that. Um, but that's one more cable that's in the way, and I would much rather take advantage of pulse guiding. So the guys at, at Team Celestron actually did correct the driver, and they got that to work. And now, the with in one of the beta releases of uh, of CPWI software that's available through their website, it'll now work with a longer move uh, that will work with. PHD2 and it'll work with Maxim uh, and, and it'll guide using the, the telescope commands instead of having to use the ST4 cable, which that's great because that frees me up from, from using, I can now use whatever camera I want to as the camera. I don't have another cable that's in the way, another thing to go wrong. Uh, that cable has gotten hooked on things and, and gotten snagged and uh, caused the mount to error out because it, it, it snags the cable. It's just one less thing to worry about, so I'm very happy with that. However, all that being said, and the fact that Celestron has made that a, as a resource available and their engineers are on that site, um, it still is a little bit annoying to me that things don't work like the way that you would think that they should. You should be able to just connect your camera to your camera program, connect CPWI to the thing, and it should just work. When you tell it to home, it should go to home. When you tell it to go find a star, it should find a star and hopefully put it within your uh, field of view. I'm, at, I'm using F7 uh, optics, uh, 1960 focal length, um, and I would expect the object to at least fall in the rim of that somewhere. I have got it to work through a lot of uh, building a, a pointing model through the software, um, I've added in about 25 points in the pointing model, one by one, going to a star, telling it where to go to, and now it works okay if I turn on the scope and tell it to sync. It'll go to the first star, and the first bright star, if it's not within the field of view, I can at least usually see a glow in the direction that it is, and move my scope over until I find that until I get the star to actually go on the field of view, and then I can uh, sync on that star, and then I'll get okay pointing accuracy. It'll at least be in the, in the field of view. And um, my field of view with this optics and, and the camera is about the same as a full moon. So imagine you've got a full moon and trying to find a target with about the same accuracy as somewhere on the full moon. Um, I consider that to be uh, acceptable, but um, I, and I've, I, I'm okay with it, but it's not awesome. It's just okay. And the other thing is uh, now, now that the mount will talk to ASCOM pulse driving, now I can finally do a closed loop slew, which is you point at a target, or, and if it gets close enough, you can uh, plate solve it. And then when you plate solve it, it tells the, the, the telescope controller to, to finish whatever direction that you're off to go to that uh, final point and put the point in the center. And I found that using the closed loop slew, I can get it to with that around the center of the, of the, of the CCD. Um, and it does that okay. But that's where I am now. And it's taken me about two years with this mount to get there. Um, and it's just now able to do that. I, what's funny is, now that I've gotten all this to work right, I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, you know, this is hard. It's too hard. And so I've kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm about ready to make the decision to bite the bullet um, and invest in a more expensive mount. Uh, my mount choice that I'm looking at and, and, and trying to uh, work out with the school and, and to be able to buy is a Paramount MyT. Um, I've been doing some research and the Paramount and the astrophysics mounts seem to be recommended the most on anywhere that I go to. There are others. There's the uh, Ioptron. Uh, there's Lasmandi. There's a couple of other different varieties out there that are very good and I've seen. Uh, but the Paramount MyT just appeals to me more. I've looked at their software, uh, the Sky X, and how it integrates with uh, the camera and the dome. And it'll allow me, I hope, to use one program to do everything. And I know I've seen some that say, 
Well, you can use a Sky X together with uh, SGP or Sequence Generator Pro, or you can use it with PHD2 to do the guiding. Um, and maybe I'll have to do that at some point, but I don't know necessarily why you would need to do that. I've been looking at the capabilities of the Sky X, and it will control the dome, the camera, uh, the telescope, and it'll do it all in one package. Um, maybe some of the guys that are doing this all through Sequence Generator Pro or something, they don't want to, to, to buy the other add-on packages because it is expensive to get the each of the uh, little add-ons like uh, T-point add-on, camera add-on, dome add-on, they all kind of uh, add up um, at $250 each. So I, I think some guys are, are trying to do with the basic SkyX package that, that the lowest price that they can and then use Sequence Generator Pro for the rest of it. Maybe that's what they're doing. Um, I'm going to try to just get the dome add-on and uh, get all of it controlled through one package. I have seen with the dome add-on that they work with Next Dome, and they have the Next Dome drivers uh, as part of it. So I'm hoping to be able to get it all integrated into one package. The last reason for that, besides the fact that I'm just tired of dealing with individual packages to do it all, I just want one package to to uh, one package to rule them all and 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 bind them uh, like Lord of the Rings, right? I just want it to be one thing because. Right now, I'm teaching in a class, and I don't, I, I just can't have the students use it. I have to have, I have to do it myself. I can't just say to any of the advanced students, hey, go in here, go to my uh, login, uh, and then log into this telescope and use it. Um, the software is complex enough, and there's enough moving parts where I just can't. It's, it's not going to work. So I think, I'm, I'm hoping that with one package um, and it, with it all being integrated, that I might be able to work up a cookbook laboratory for some of the students uh, and with some supervision, have them go in uh, during lab times and move to an object, take a picture and experience that for themselves. These are undergraduates. These are not astronomy majors. This is just a, a, a basic science class that's is for the core classes, um, but some of them are competent and some of them do want to get involved. So I want to try to get it where a student who with only a little bit of teaching could go in and point the telescope at something, take a picture, and have a good result. Right now, um, I'm struggling to do it myself and I just don't think I could turn this over and turn the reins over to a uh, a go-getter kind of a student to be able to do it. But I want to be able to do that because that's why the telescope is here. Um, just right now, I really have to be involved with everyone who tries to use it and, and give a lot of input because things go wrong and they don't, they'll shut down or I'll lose a comm connection or, or something will drop out and I'll have to reset and redo it and it's just irritating. So that's what we're going to try and do. Um, I, I, I'm going to try and work that out uh, so the school uh, can afford it and also try to get a, a package that will, that will work, that a student could take over and do, um, and we'll see how it goes from there. I'll report back uh, as, I get, as I get more uh, into the development of this project, and hopefully we'll have a dome that has full robotic capability with the shutter being robotic. We'll have the telescope that'll all be controlled through one software package with the Paramount MyT and the SkyX, and I'll have a lot less headaches and I'll be able to do a lot more imaging and a lot less messing around with the mount. I'm, I'm getting tired of it. I just want to image. Come on, people. All right, so that's our uh, current status update report on how things are going with the dome and where we want to go from here. And I'm Dave with OC Astronomy and uh, Clear Skies, everybody.